We are very fortunate to have with us today co-founder of Lupe Prime Volleyball League and managing director of Baseline Ventures, Mr. Tohin Mishra. Thank you so much, sir, for joining. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> I'll just correct you. I don't run the league. There are a bunch of guys who we all managed to run the league. So, yes, Absolutely. all yours. We'll hear more from you on that. <laughs> so, let's begin by telling the viewers a fun fact about the PVL. That the inception of the PVL happened between two wonderful people. One is the CEO of the league, Mr. Joy Bhattacharya, and the other one is you. So, I'd like you to throw some light on it. So, the inception of PVL actually happened around the end of 2019-2020 because we had run a very successful season one of Pro Volleyball League. That time also it was called Rupe Pro Volleyball League. And for various reasons, that couldn't carry forward. And uh, that's all in public domain. So when that thing stopped, we had two things or two ways to go about our journey. One was to say to hell with volleyball as baseline. We do a lot of things in the field of sports, sports marketing. And the other thing for us was let's not give up. We've done something which is very nice. Probably I would say it's a blessing in disguise that things happened and uh, let's take this as an opportunity as a sign from the almighty that probably all of us are destined to do something nice something bigger for volleyball and we took that as a as an indication that we all went ahead and uh, we conceptualized this whole beautiful thing called prime volleyball league very thankful to rupe that they agreed to carry uh, on with their relationship we had a lot of other sponsors like a23 which also came on board but the most important thing was we had a bunch of franchise uh, teams, franchise owners at that point in time who all said that we all want to be part of this revolution, do their bit towards contributing towards the sport of volleyball. So we had someone like Thomas Muthuth who owns the Kochi Blue Spikers. We had Shafir and his friends who own the, the Calicut Heroes who came forward. We had Dr. D.G. Chaudhary who owns one of the co-owners uh, of uh, Ahmedabad Defenders. Then uh, we had the uh, Hyderabad Blackhawks team owners who all came forward and interestingly we also had some new owners who said that they were interested. One was the uh, bunch of guys owning Bangalore Torpedoes, Ankit Nagori and Yashwan Biala who, who were interested to own a team from Bangalore and uh, a pleasant surprise was Mr. Patodia, Mr. Pawan Patodia who actually came and met us in our Delhi office. When we met him we really liked the whole exuberance that he exuded and this is what he promised us ki boss mera team jeetega ya nahi jeetega main hansi zarur launga and that i have to give it to mr pawan patodia then uh, we got to know his son as well sumed uh, they all came as a package which is a nice package <laughs> and uh, it all became like almost one big happy family there were times where we would have a different opinion but it was fine because when multiple people work towards a common goal people will have different views but the best part was that we all have been work, uh, working towards that common cause. And I would say the inception of the Rupe Prime Volleyball League per se is all these guys brought together in this forum where everyone is working towards that common cause, which is towards the, the good of the volleyball players and obviously providing entertainment to millions of people all over the world. So as you said, you've all become a big happy family. So to that was the addition of a new franchisee in season 2, Mumbai. So how important was it to have the Mumbai and its owners on board and how many more should we be expecting in the upcoming seasons? Through our common links, we came across the, uh, the owners of Mumbai, which is uh, Samir Nigam and uh, Rahul Chari. They are the co-owners of, or the, sorry, co-founders of PhonePay, which is probably one of the biggest unicorns of, of India. So when they showed interest, so we went and met them and it was again a pleasant surprise. They might be one of the really top guys in the field of the startup world, but the passion and interest, like Samir himself plays volleyball every weekend. Saturday, Sunday, that uh, the time when we met his family, they said, you know, when that time comes during the weekend, he forgets about everything else. It's just volleyball for him. So when we found such kind of owners again who want to be part of this whole movement of Prime Volleyball League, it couldn't be better for us and that's how we kind of welcome them with open arms. So what about more franchises? What should we be expecting like? Yes, we 
are in discussions. There are a lot of people who have come forward, who have shown interest in buying a franchise, a new franchise. I can assure you, the new franchise which comes on board will surely be from the north of India because probably that's the only, I would say, zone. empty zone which yeah. is there as, as of now. now. So, the uh, rest, we are pretty well covered throughout the country. Absolutely. Sir, we were, we were there in season 1 and we saw it happen inside of Biobuffin. And cut to season 2, all of a sudden, it's happening across three cities in India in a massive scale. Bangalore, we just got done with the Bangalore leg. Right now in Hyderabad, we proceed towards Kochi for the remainder of the season. How has that experience been from a bio bubble to a full-blown proper Indian league? Can you uh, shed some light on that? See, when we were doing the season one, right. that itself was very unique because we were in initially planning to hold the the season in Cochin. That was in uh, in 2022, but because of COVID. Cases were rising in Cochin and generally we were in the middle of a, this wave of whole COVID. We all decided to move to Hyderabad where the cases were relatively lesser. And it all happened within the period of 10 days. So that itself is a mammoth task that the entire operations, everything had to be moved. But that was season one. It was done almost in, within an empty stadium. Uh, just few people whom you to allow because of the COVID restrictions. Then cut to... 2023, suddenly as you rightly mentioned, three host cities, Bangalore, uh, now Hyderabad and finally Kochi. Fans are coming there, you see matches, the fans are being very vocal, they are coming with drums, they are coming with whistles, they are coming with vuvuzelas. When we had this concept of this dance cam, so when we started that in Bangalore, we were not sure how it will go, whether people you know, will be a little more stuck up, whether they will actually dance to the camera when music is in played and that's in between the sets. And we never expected that it's become a runaway success because now everyone, whether it's a kid, whether it's a grown-up, we've seen 60-year-old, 70-year-old guys dancing to music on dance camp, yeah. which means that when people are coming there, they are losing all their inhibitions. Absolutely. They are not th coming there just that, oh, let me go and watch a, a volleyball match, but they've come here for enjoyment. Right. And this is what sport is all about. It is about entertainment. Some One team is going to win, the other team is going to lose. Right? There will be someone who will feel bad at the end of the day. But at the but in this whole process, if people can enjoy that journey, right. this is what we stand for. Right. Right. Uh, so, we, we've seen it happen in three cities. So, what's the roadmap going forward? Uh, will we have a home away format anytime soon or something of that sort? See, home away format, probably we are little still a little far from that. At the end of the day, we are also looking at the whole economics of it. Because the mo moment you start, adding more and more cities, the cost of the league also goes up. Our whole idea is that in season two, we've had these three cities where the, the league has been hosted. As we move forward, we'll have new cities. There are other franchises which also would love to host the, the right. season. So season three, we'll have new cities right. which will get selected. And again, that's a decision that we'll take at a board level. So also your um, FIVB partnership is twofold. You know, one is the international streaming on the volleyball world and the other one is the world club volleyball championship which is coming to india for two consecutive seasons that is 2023 and 2024 so how did this all happen and what should the viewers be expecting out of it i think issue i will say now the partnership with fivb is not twofold but threefold one as you rightly said that we have a partnership with volleyball world so volleyball world is the commercial arm of fivb where CVC, which is one of the top funds, global funds, which also owns the, the IPL team, the team from Gujarat. So that fund basically is the commercial arm of uh, FIVB, being a majority stakeholder in volleyball world. So we have a partnership with them, which is the entire content, the entire match footage will be streamed live on the Volleyball, volleyball. World TV. The second level is, again, as you rightly mentioned, was that the World Club Championship which is the biggest club championship in the field of volleyball that is going to be hosted in India not one year but two years yes. which is 2023 and 2024. So basically the top five volleyball clubs of the world could be from Brazil, from Italy, from US, from Africa and even Asia, the number one club, they will all come down to India to play against the winner of the Rupe Prime Volleyball League of this season. That itself is a big one. So that's the second one. 
The third one is, and the interesting part is now the league is also recognized by FIVB. Why? Because now all the foreign players who have come in this year, everyone has come through the FIVB transfer system, where a portion of the money is also goes to FIVB to the local federation, which incidentally means that the league itself is recognized by FIVB. In season one, when we had done this. This process was not there because it was run independently out of any of the global federation or the national federation of those players. Now this time, every foreign player who is playing, a portion of the salary is also going to FIVB. A portion of the salary is also going to the local federation. We got a spice to work and got a rumor that we heard that you are the biggest closer in the volleyball of the sports fraternity. So much so that. While traveling from your home to the stadium, you already closed two deals. <laughs> so if you can shed some light on that, or closing deals. No, no, In fact, I, give us the mantras also. Yeah, yeah, that we would love to have. That. Uh, no, I mean that's 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 the kind of a. Uh, Story or a, this thing which has been floating around, I know where it also started and what is the source of that. But uh, in all honesty, uh, I do enjoy closing deals. But not only me, but my other uh, colleagues uh, who are also part of baseline, because that's what we do for a living. But at the end of the day, what we feel is that anything that you do, uh, it has to be a win-win. So it's not just one-way traffic. So as long as we can uh, do that. I think uh, whether it is deals, whether it is relationships, or whether it is partnerships that you forge, that will last long. Absolutely. Before we end the interview session with you, one last message to the viewers: You've already seen the grow, uh, league grow from one city to three cities. Association with FIUV. What can the audience expect in the seasons to come from Blue Bay Flying World? I can surely uh, suggest, and I can vouch on. on behalf of all the team owners on behalf of all the teams on behalf of the management that this league will surely grow from strength to strength if we have eight teams in season 2 i can assure you by season 3 season 4 we'll definitely have at least nine or 10 teams there's a lot of talk which is also happening internally that when do we start the women's league i can assure you again that is something which is there in the pipeline we are all working towards that uh because at the end of the day we believe in uh, equality of the sport how do we get the the women uh, side of volleyball in also into into our league where we have teams which own a women's team we have to give it a fact that even IPL they've now going to have a proper women's league after almost 15. 14 15 years of their existence when we are thinking on those lines right after season 2 it just shows the whole intent that the whole management has towards it we might be just probably still few years away from it but it's just a matter of time from the men's uh, league that we are currently doing it will just become bigger and bigger and the idea is that we will unearth more and more indian stars for volleyball who are going to serve india for a long time and that's the idea where we can give local players unknown players the platform and they can come and shine here right. so that's the idea Thank you so much sir for your time today and that was Tuhin Mishra Ishu beside me and Priyam from Kolkata Thunder Bulls we sign off for now hope to see you again in the next video that we come on thank you